Then Imam al Barbahari, he continued with what occurs here <coughs> on page 62 of the second volume. That's point number 108 with a continuation. وَأَلَمْ أَنَّ الدِّينَ الْأَتِيقِ مَا كَانَ مِنْ وَفَاتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى قتل أثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه وكان قتله أول الفرقة وأول الاختلاف فتحاربت الأمة وتفرقت واتبعت الطمع والأهواء والميل إلى الدنيا فليس لأحد رخصة في شيء أحدثه مما لم يكن عليه أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو يكون رجل يدعو إلى شيء أحدثه من قبله من أهل البدع فهو كمن أحدثه فمن زعم ذلك أو قال به فقد رد السنة فقد رد السنة وخالف الحق والجماعة وأباح البدع وهو أضر على هذه الأمة من إبليس He said رحمه الله and know that the deen al-atiq and know that the ancient religion is how it was from the death of Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم till the murder of Uthman ibn Affan رضي الله عنه his murder his murder was the beginning of splitting and the start of differing. So the nation fought among, amongst themselves, split, and followed greed and desires, and inclined towards this world. So no one has any concession for anything which he introduces from that which the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa were not upon nor for any man to call to anything which the people of innovation innovated before him so he will be just like the one who innovated it so anyone who claims it or says it then he has rejected the sunnah and he has opposed the truth and the Jama'ah and he has made innovations lawful he is more harmful to this nation than Iblis <laughs> Shaykh Al-Fawzan he said in explanation his saying وَأَلَمْ أَنَّ الدِّينَ الْأَتِيقِ مَا كَانَ مِنْ وَفَاتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى قتل أثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه and know that the ancient religion is how it was from the death of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until the murder of Uthman Radiallahu Anhu Shaykh Razan said meaning, meaning that the pure and clear Jama'ah the pure and clear united body of Muslims upon the truth the pure and clear Jama'ah which did not have any differing is that which was in the time of the three Khalifas Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman because in the time of the three Khalifas ikhtilaf disagreements differing did not occur and the Muslims were a single jama'ah, a single body agreeing upon the truth so when the killing of Uthman anhu, occurred then the door opened up for the people to differing and evils and fitan, trials and tribulations through his murder radiallahu anhu. he said he's saying وَكَانَ قَتْلُهُ أَوَّلَ الْفُرْقَةِ And his murder was the start of splitting. Shaykh Fawzan said the beginning of splitting 
occurred on account of the murder of Uthman radiallahu anhu when he was killed al amans order and security was breached was broken order and, sec- the order, order and security was broken and the united body separated and misguided sects appeared and that which has been written in history occurred however along with all of this and all praises for Allah the religion is preserved whoever wants the truth and wants good does not have to do anything except to return to the book to refer back to the book and the sunnah and to what the united body the jama'ah of the muslims were upon and he will find the truth clearly even if the differing becomes much and the trials and tribulations and evils become many <coughs> then the shaykh explained and he gave the reason that led to the murder of Uthman radiallahu anhu he said and the cause of the killing of Uthman radiallahu anhu the rightly guided the rightly guided and just Khalifa the Nurain the possessor of the two lights this is a title given to Uthman radiallahu anhu because he was married to two of the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa one after the other the first one died passed away radiallahu anha and Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa married him to the second so therefore he's given the title Dhun the possessor of the two lights he married to two of the mothers of the believers so he said that the cause of the murder of Uthman radiallahu anhu the rightly guided and just Khalifa possessor of the two lights was that a Jew from the Jews of Yemen who was called Abdullah ibn Sabah who had the title Ibn al-Sawda the son of the black woman just in case we forget this Abdullah ibn Sabah he was the founder of the Rafida founder of this religion of the Rafida the Rafida Shia ones are in Persia at the moment which they call Iran so this Abdullah ibn Sabah who had the title Ibn al-Sawda the son of the black woman because his mother was an Abyssinian woman so he pretended to be upon Islam as a trick then he came to al Madina, <coughs> and he began spreading amongst the people abuse against Uthman and speaking against Uthman intending by that to disrupt the order of the Muslims and to split the Muslims to cause splits amongst the Muslims and the chef made the point he said and the callers to misguidance they find that each and every time the callers to misguidance they find people who will follow them and incline towards them and give ear to their speech this happens in every time and in every age the callers to misguidance find many from the ignorant masses and the foolish people who will give ear to them who will listen to them and who will follow up who will follow their reports who will follow the reports which they bring the sheikh said just as he the most high said وَلِتَصْغَى إِلَيْهِ أَفْئِدَةُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَلِيَرْضَوْهُ وَلِيَقْتَرِفُوا وَلِيَقْتَرِفُوا مَا هُمْ مُقْتَرِفُونَ Surah Al-An'am the 6th Surah Ayah 113 with the explanation and in order that the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter should incline towards falsehood and be pleased with it and that they may commit that which they commit 
Sheikh Hassan said, carrying on with the story of this evildoer, Ibn Sabah, he said, there gathered along with this Ibn Sabah ignorant people and stupid common people and they began abusing Uthman radiallahu anhu then he became alert to him Uthman radiallahu anhu became alert to this man and what he was doing so therefore he fled Abdullah ibn Sabah fled he went he, he ran away from al Madina and went to Egypt and he found a group of people there and he went to other than Egypt and he found a group of people so groups of evil people joined him groups of the evil people evil doers they joined him flocked towards him then they came and they besieged Uthman radiallahu anhu in his house they surrounded him besieged him in his house with the excuse that they wanted to debate with Uthman radiallahu anhu and to check some affairs out with Uthman this is what they manifested this is what they put out as their reason that they wanted to come to a mutual understanding with him and to discuss with him so therefore the companions radiallahu anhum did not fight them they didn't fight them then because of the fact that they only wanted to check some matters with Uthman so when it was the night time and Allah's refugees sought they attacked Uthman they made an attack upon Uthman in his house and they killed him at the end of the night and whilst the people were sleeping and at the time of the Hajj and most of the companions were in Mecca and this is what they had planned for him they pre-planned this <coughs> so they killed him and, and he was one who was killed wrongfully so then fitna, discord occurred and splitting and differing and infighting between the Muslims and the Muslims have continued to suffer from this right until this day then Sheikh Bazan said he's saying فَلَيْسِ لِأَحَدٍ رُخْصَةٌ فِي شَيْءٍ أَحْدَثَهُ مِمَّا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَلَيْهِ أَصْحَابُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. He said, so no one has any concession, any allowance for anything which he newly <coughs> introduces from that which the companions of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were not upon. Shaykh Fawzan said, this is the principle that when differing occurs, we refer back to that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were upon. Just as he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when he was asked what is a safe set? He said مَا كَانَ عَلَى مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمَ وَأَصْحَابِي That which is upon that which I am upon today and my companions. And in the footnote they mention that the uh, checking of this hadith and referencing of this hadith has already proceeded. We've had it before, the hadith is the hadith reported by Tirmidhi with this wording and declared Hassan by Shaykh al-Rabani. He mentioned the hadith that which is upon that which I and my companions are upon today. Shaykh al-Razan said so we re refer back to, the, to this we return to this he said he's saying أَوْ يَكُونُوا رَجُلٌ يَدْعُوا إِلَى شَيْءٍ أَحْدَثَهُ مِنْ قَبْلَ مَنْ قَبْلَهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ فَهُوَ كَمَنْ أَحْدَثَهُ or that a man so he mentioned a person who introduces something into the deen he has no concession for that no excuse and he said 
or that a man calls to something which somebody before him from the people of innovation introduced they introduced it and he now calls to it so he is just like the one who introduced it it's just the same as the one who introduced it this one who is calling to it Shaykh Fadan said whoever acts upon innovation then he is like the one who introduced the innovation as is indicated by his saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Man ahdatha fi amrina Hadha ma laysa minhu Fahuwa rajd Saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Whoever introduces into this affair of ours That which is not from it Then it will be rejected And the Shaykh said And in one narration The wording Man amila Amalan Laysa alayhi amruna Fahuwa rajd Whoever performs an action which our affair is not in accordance with then it will be rejected. And I mentioned in the footnote that this checking of this hadith this is from the famous hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha with these two wordings occurring in the Sahih of al-Bukhari with one wording and also in the Sahih of Muslim. With the first wording, whoever introduces into this affair of ours that which is not from it, then it's rejected. And with the second wording, whoever performs an action not in accordance which is our affair is not in accordance with, it will be rejected. So then the Shaykh concludes and says, So whoever acts upon the innovation, then Fahua Mubtadir, then he is an innovator. Even if the one who actually introduced it is someone else besides him. And he said, he's saying, فَمَنْ زَعَمَ ذَلِكَ أَوْ قَالَ بِهِ فَقَدْ رَدَّ السُّنَّةِ وَخَالَفَ الْحَقِّ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ وَأَبَاحَ الْبِدَعَةِ وَهُوَ أَضَرُّ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ مِنْ إِبْلِيسِ He said, so whoever claims that, or says in accordance with it, then he has rejected the sunnah and he has contradicted the truth and the jama'ah and he has made permissible innovations and he is more harmful against this nation than Iblis Sheikh al Fawzan said the one who promotes innovations and dissuades people from the affairs of the sunnah this person is more harmful to the nation than Iblis because the people know that Iblis is an enemy and that Allah has warned us against him but this one many people do not know that he is an enemy the one who does this calls to innovations and dissuades people or alienates people from matters of the Sunnah Sheikh said for this one many of the people do not know that he is an enemy because he camouflages himself he camouflages himself with Islam and with knowledge and he manifests good so he is more harmful than Iblis who clearly displays enmity and therefore the munafiqun, the hypocrites are more dangerous to the Muslims than the kuffar and the outright disbelievers because as for the kuffar the outright disbelievers then it is known that they are disbelievers but as for those people, the hypocrites, munafiqun then they make an outward show of being upon Islam whilst they plot against the Muslims secretly within the body of the Muslims so this is more dangerous and therefore Allah the Majestic and Most High said with regard to them humul adu fahdarhum 
قات رحم الله أم لا يفكون سورة المنافقون سورة the whole surah about them the hypocrites 63rd surah ayah 4 with the explanation they are the enemy so beware of them may Allah curse them how is it that they are deluded away from the truth that's where Sheikh Rozan ends explanation of this point just to mention briefly something from the explanation of Shaykh Ahmad al-Najmi rahimahullah and he just made the point of note with regard to the point that the Deen al-Atiq the ancient religion is being described as being what was from the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa until the killing of Uthman that is the ancient religion and Shaykh Ahmad al-Najmi rahimahullah he just made a point he said so the author described the time which preceded the killing of Uthman radiallahu anhu and which came after the passing away of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being the time of the ancient religion. And this saying, perhaps a point of observation could be made with regard to the author. Because ad al atiq the ancient religion, is the book of Allah in actually what is the ancient religion he said it is the book of Allah and the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and these two remain and there is no doubt if these two they remain so in other words the ancient religion remains no matter what and he said but no doubt this time was secure from disagreement outwardly however the enemies of the religion the evil doers they were planting seeds of disagreement as you have heard so he described the disagreement he, he was describing here the disagreement that came about even though the religion the deen is what is taken from the book of Allah and the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa with regard to matters of creed and belief and with regard to rulings and that was settled with the, with the death of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so it would be befitting to mention it with a different wording such that he could say the time of the rightly guided khulafa radiallahu anhum before the death of Uthman was the time when the people of influence and authority were united in the affairs of the religion and there was no disagreement that was apparent the chef said because of the point and why, why is this observation being made he said because the religion that was at that time is the same religion that is after it it's, it is the same as the first religion I mean, the ancient religion will always be the same what to what different occurs. He carried on with further explanation. <laughs>